Hey, welcome back to Zombie Tactics. Um, I've been requested by some associates to expand on some uh, ideas that I offered up in a video called Fast Enough to Die, and there'll be a link here that you can, you can go to that and watch this first. But the basic idea of that video was that the idea of the Western style quick draw, two guys facing off in the street and, you know, one of them is going to draw real fast and he gets that one perfect shot off or maybe even bam, 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 two, three shots off and the guy goes, uh, and holds his chest and falls to the ground and it's whoever gets off the first shot is the guy that's going to win. That that's a complete fantasy. Um, I'll let you watch the previous video and, and or I expand on that notion a little bit more. But people have asked me questions like this. What are you saying? There's no value in having a fast draw? Are you saying that people ought to be slow? Uh, no, I'm not saying either of those things. I'm saying what is true in a lot of areas of life, that past a certain point there is a law of declining returns. Now, if the quickest that you can get a gun out of a holster in the real world is about 10 seconds, you're at an extreme disadvantage. That's probably fa not fast enough. The whole thing's going to be over by then, and if, you know, by some chance you're not hit, that's a good thing. You're still kind of the winner, I guess, in a way, in that you get to go home. Uh, as long as you and the folks that you're responsible for are not hurt, you know, it's a win in my book, uh, whether or not you got your gun to bear or not. But honestly, 10 seconds is far too long. But we shouldn't be worried so much about the difference between, say, a draw that is one and a half seconds and a draw that is one and a quarter second or even one second. That draw that difference in draw speed in the context of a real world shooting incident, a self-defense incident, whether it's involving a police officer or a private citizen, I don't see any evidence that that really makes a difference. Now people will say things like, yeah, but a half a second, or they'll even say a tenth of a second is forever in a gunfight. It's forever, I guess, in that a lot can happen in that space of time, but this statement that somehow a half a second is forever in a gunfight seems to me to be predicated on the notion that somehow the thing that happens in that half second is going to be the thing that's going to make the difference between you going home or going to the morgue. And in reviewing, gosh, dozens, probably hundreds of pieces of video and crime reports and things like that, I just don't see any evidence of that ever happening. I don't see any evidence, for one thing, of a police officer or a private citizen ever getting the drop on the bad guy, meaning that the bad guy goes for a gun and somehow the citizen gets the gun out first and fires it before the bad guy can get a shot off or before the bad guy has the gun pointed in your direction. If that's the case, and all the material I'm looking at seems to indicate that it is, why are we basing what we think is good gun handling for self-defense on the idea that somehow what we need to do is we need to be able to outdraw the other guy? That's a, that's a notion based upon fantasy because we don't find it in the real world. So if that's the kind of thing that we're basing our training and our practice around, we're doing this based on a flawed notion. We're doing it based upon something that never happens in the real world. Now, from time to time, people will, will bring to me something and they'll say, see, here's a case from the Old West and where there was a, they were in the streets and they drew down. And, and usually it'll be like they're pointing to some source that's not a historical source or it's not a very good one. It's one of those kinds of pulp novels or magazine articles or crime you know, magazine articles from the, the 1800s that were designed to kind of you know, sell magazines and be exciting, but they weren't really historical reports. Again, though, the notion that a lot can happen in a half second or a quarter second or a tenth second is based more on the idea that like, we're going to be able to do something in that tenth of a second or that half second that's going to make the difference between life and death for us. And I never see that happening. Certainly nobody's ever outdrawing a bad guy in the real world. Now let's get down to what we think, well, what might happen? Well, you could get off a couple of shots in a half a second. Okay you probably could get off a couple of shots in a half a second. Maybe even accurate shots if you're training well enough. But here again, handgun rounds are not instant stoppers. We see instance after instance after instance, not of people going, Ugh, they got hit once, they got hit twice, and now they're falling to the ground and crumpling. No, what we see over and over again is somebody gets shot, they keep shooting. 
They get shot one, two, three, four times. They keep shooting. That just recently happened. We can see the footage from Miami where a gentleman got the drop on these police officers because he was in a car and they didn't see him as they were going to, you know, arrest someone else. And, you know, he's pointing the gun and shooting at them first. He's already shooting. There's no outdrawing him that's going to go on. He gets hit two, three, four times in the body. He's still up. He's still got the gun going. Where is that half second thing coming into play? That quarter second thing coming into play? And this is not an isolated instance. This is something that we see over and over and over again. Handgun rounds are not instant stoppers. The only instant stop is a round that's going to go right in through the noggin into the medulla oblongata, which is about the size of a quarter. Good luck making that shot. It never does it never happens. Every stoppage that ever happens is some combination of a psychological factor, meaning that the guy is not physically uh, prevented from continuing doing what he's doing. He's psychologically saying, whoa, I'm being shot, up, shot at, I'm out of here. Or he gets hurt enough to the point where he loses the will to continue. Or eventually, and this is usually 30, 40, 50 seconds, 2 minutes, 3 minutes, 15 minutes later, you know, the person does eventually expire from their wounds. Those are the ways that people get stopped. There is no magic half second area where you're going to be able to do something that's going to absolutely guarantee a, a, a physical stop of that fight. You shoot somebody twice, they're just as likely to keep shooting. Um, or maybe they'll run away <laughs> if, if you're lucky. But they're just as likely to run away if you don't even hit them at all if you're shooting at them. Uh, so the half second, quarter second notion that somehow we're going to get our draw out to another quarter second faster, and that's going to be the thing that's going to keep us alive, there's no sense to this. It's not based on anything but a set of assumptions and cultural programming from movies, TV, and bad crime magazines. Uh, case in point here, though, is people will say, yeah, but I want to be faster. I want to get better. There's nothing wrong with that. I would never argue that like there's some level of performance at which you could say, all right, I'm good enough now. I never have to practice again. But there is something to be said for not being obsessed with a quick draw, with saying that like my purpose here is to be able to get the gun out efficiently and consistently to make sure that every single time it's working right and that I'm doing the right things over and over again. You know, perfect practice is, it's not practice makes perfect, it's perfect practice makes perfect. It's doing the same things over and over again and getting it right every time that means that when we're under stress, we're going to be able to do that right every time. Case in point here, I, I know of a gentleman, I know him from uh, internet forums and from YouTube uh, and some other sources, and he's constantly obsessed with the idea of a quick draw because he still believes that that's the thing that's going to keep him alive. Uh, you know, his, his attitude is like, the first guy to get off a, a shot is the winner. Mm, you know, good luck with that. I don't know why you're drawing on somebody if they don't already have a gun out and pointed at you, frankly. Uh, and most people don't warn you and say, all right, we're going to draw, reach for the sky. But this is what he believes. And he very proudly put up a video of him practicing over and over and over again, trying to get his draw below one second. Now, what was he doing to try to get his draw below one second? He was able to consistently and accurately and, and smoothly get that gun out in a, one and a half seconds, one and a quarter seconds, without fail at all. But he was obsessed about this idea that he had to get it below a second or somehow he wasn't a real gunslinger or something. So on this video, you see him practicing this over and over again. And one of the things that he's done is right off the bat, keep in mind, this guy carries in a pretty standard concealment holster underneath normal clothing that you and I would wear, a long shirt like I'm wearing now, or you know, underneath a coat or something like that. And he carries maybe an, one extra magazine with him uh, on a... On a you know, on the opposite side of his belt, like many of us do, or maybe in a pocket or something like that. But to get his one second draw, he's now putting on a completely different kind of cover, cover garment. He's putting on one of these IDPA style, uh, you know, uh, vests that they wear. So it's not a realistic cover garment that he would wear on the street. He's got a holster that's a competition holster. He's actually using a different gun than what he carries normally. He's using a full-size gun. I won't even go into what it is, but it has a manual safety on it and some other things. Very popular gun. He's got competition-style magazine holders that he's working with, and he's got his shot timer going. And 
he's not carrying anything like his regular carry rig, but yet he thinks he's doing self-defense training and practice. So right off the bat, we're, we're getting our mind so wrapped around the idea that we have to have a fast draw that we're changing everything to be something completely unrealistic than what we would actually carry out in the street. Well, he's, on this video, he's going over and over again, and it's beep, you know, boom, and he's shooting a target about seven yards away. Beep, boom. And he's not able to get below one second, and you can tell he's getting more and more frustrated on the video, so he keeps pushing it and pushing it to try to get below that one second. And finally, he gets a shot or two off just barely within one, under one second. He's looking at his shot timer. He's going, whoa, 0.9, whatever. Woohoo, woohoo. He's jumping up and down. He's finally made it. He really thinks he's totally a badass now. And, and he puts this video up as though, here's a source of pride. Look at this. I've accomplished something putting on a completely unrealistic carry garment and, and carry rig and, and a different gun than I carry and my magazine's mounted in a completely different position. And now I've accomplished something. Look at my great accomplishment. And he, he doesn't even seem to realize in his own mind that on that same video he shows over and over again failure. He's practicing failure. He's pushing himself so hard that over and over on this video, beep, he goes, oh, he doesn't get the cover of garment all the way back. And he's grabbing half the gun and comes up with half a vest in his hand. And it's like, oh, crap, i got to, you know, reset now, do a chamber check in and get myself, you know, get a perfect stance going. And it's like, hit the shot timer, beep, oh, he, he drops the gun on the ground because he's trying to get it out so fast. He does it again, beep, comes out, the, he drops a magazine. He gets a shot off, but he actually drops a magazine. He's so flustered, he puts the gun back, and he, he hits the shot timer. One came, beep, he comes out, and it's like, oh, I forgot to actually a chamber around. <laughs> you know? <laughs> over and over and over again, failure after failure after failure. He actually fails on the video to, to even get around on target for one of these reasons more than he ever gets around on target. Uh... It's, you know, it's unbelievable that this person thinks of this as success, but it shows you how we can get a mindset where we're focusing on the wrong thing and the wrong part of the problem to the point where, like, we are actually doing ourselves harm. I can't think of anything that that gentleman was doing, nice guy, that was really of good benefit to him in using, learning to use his firearm effectively, the different gun carried in a different way completely, that he carries normally for self-defense, but he's convinced that now he's a real gunslinger because of that. Uh, we can't let ourselves think that way. What are some of the things, if it isn't this you know, breakneck speed of draw, that are going to keep us alive? Well, over and over and over again, we do see the following. We see, I don't know what you want to call it, stealth tactics, being smarter than the other guy, uh, over and over again, we'll see people breaking into, you know, come running into an internet cafe, and they've got rifles and shotguns. They're ready to go, go to town. And it isn't some super fast draw on the part of the, the business owner that saves the day. It's the fact that the business owner sits there and waits and waits and waits till they're not paying attention, and then his gun is out. And he's taking shots, and they're running out the door because they were not expecting to be opposed. Or it is the fact that, like this video in Miami recently, where this guy's soaking up round after round after round, one cop, one, cop, one officer, uh, I'll use that term, it's a better term, he finally gets himself into a position where he's able to take a careful aimed shot, and he hits the guy probably in the face or you know partly in the head. It doesn't hit him in that perfect area or whatever, but that's the thing that finally the guy, it, it takes the life out of him, uh, or it takes the will to fight out of him, and he falls to the ground, and he's there on the ground, he's still alive. But that's the thing that finally stops the instance. It wasn't the fact that that you know, officer had some particularly speedy draw. This is 10, 15 seconds into an extended gun battle. Over and over again, we see that it's not a quick draw. It's movement to get out of the way of the oncoming fire, for one thing. I mean, we have to consider that as citizens, success for us is not saying, Woohoo! You know, I drew my gun and I shot him three times and he only shot me once. That's not success. Uh, that's you're going to the hospital and even that crappy shot that he made oh crap it hit me in my brachial artery now I'm bleeding to death I'm gonna bleed out in 90 seconds it's not success because you shot him twice and he ran away and he's gonna eventually die in the hospital you know or whatever while you're sitting here you know bleeding to death 90 seconds from a brachial hit 
Uh, I, I'm sure, you know, your buddies at the gun club will be very impressed at your speed of draw and the fact that you fought off the bad guy, but it's not going to be of much comfort to your widow and your children, you know, your orphaned children. Success for us as citizens, success for police officers is going home that night, not some overall proof that we're a badass with a gun. This is one of the reasons why we always stress things like, well, you know, avoidance, deterrence, get the heck out of there, don't be in stupid places with stupid people and stuff like that. It's not some manly adventure to prove what a great badass we are. It's an adventure that says we're in a bad place and we want to get home uninjured. We want the people that we love or the people in our care to get home injured. It's not a contest about how fast we are and how we can be, you know, a dead eye with a gun and ooh, steely nerves and quick draw and you know, we're, we're every, every cowboy and, and police fantasy from television rolled into one. Um, maybe a little bit of a rant here, uh, but more and more I'm finding that the things that are going to keep us alive in a situation where we have to defend our lives are not the things that some of us have been culturally programmed to accept. That's just kind of a bug I want to put into your ear, and I'll probably be talking to this more, uh, this point more in future videos because it's kind of one of my little things. That's Zombie Tactics for today, and we'll see you next time. Bye-bye.